for like generous people or good doing. So they get their their intention. Whatever they they want, they got it. So when they go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows they, they did the good deeds, but not for his sake. They don't even believe in Allah. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give them something? This is the rule. So la ilaha illallah, it's your path to Jannah, and it's the condition to have your deeds accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, iqami salah. By the way, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said iqami salah, not ada'a salah? Anyone knows the difference between iqam al-salah and ada' al-salah? Or just maybe a salah why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet said iqam al-salah. What, what, what iqam means? Like qam is the word. In, in English it's, it's very a little bit like difficult to explain. But in Arabic, qam it means stand. Like now, ana jalis, I'm sitting. Now, so I'm straight, standing, right? So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Aqam as salah, that's meaning you do it straight, with all conditions, with all intention, with all the thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to do it. It's iqama, to make it straight on the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us to do it. If you just go to do whatever, you will get, as the Prophet sallallahu said, some people may pray, but they get half of their prayer, or one third of their prayer, depending on what? Depending on khushu, on constraint. If they constraint in their, in their salah, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they think about Allah, they get their salah. If their mind is like in a different place, some people they actually they, they they pray and they don't know in which rak'ah they pray. They don't know if, if they finish their salah and ask them like, what did you read in your salah? He doesn't even know if he did the tashahud with the qiyam or the 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 in the sujood, he did the surah, he doesn't know. So imagine, like, he will not get much of his salah. And subhanAllah, as many authentic hadiths mention, that first, the first thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will lift from this world is khushu. It's awwal ilmin yurfa' al khushu. Even Ubadah bin al-Samit, رضي الله تعالى عنه, he said to one of the tabi'in, he said, if you want, I may be able to tell you what is the first thing Allah will lift. He said, al-fushu. He said, it's just about the time to enter the masjid. And you will see people, no one of them has fushu. And subhanAllah, it's just like Kevin. Now people are praying five rakat, six rakat. They don't even know. They don't count. There is actually a joke they said, like, there is an imam, make a mistake. And the people, they start to correct him, and, and no one is like really knows what the mistake that the imam. One said, like, you prayed three, one said two, one said four. So the imam was really confused. So one guy, he said, no, you prayed four, it's perfect, don't worry. So he said, like, alhamdulillah, at least we have one have, has khushur. He said, no, no, it's not about khushur. I have four shops, and I did the, uh, like, calculation of, like, financially <laughs> things, and each, like, ah, I do one. So I finished them all, I have, I have nothing, like, extra, so alhamdulillah, we did them four. <laughs> Four shops and four like at, and that's it. That's now our situation, subhanAllah. So we need to concentrate on our salah. Very important thing about iqam salah as well. The one who leaves salah, the one who leaves salah, 
the ulama, the scholars, they have a big debate about is he Muslim or not. So first of all, let's put it in this, let's put it in this, let's like make the discussion a little bit narrow. So they all agree. If anyone, like he ignores something or he actually rejects something from the one of these five like pillars, he said there is no Hajj in Islam. There is no prayer in Islam. There is no Siyam in Islam. Now he's a Kafir. Because this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in Sunnah, there is no doubt all the Muslims, they said, Hada ma'ulima min al dini bil barura. This is it's necessarily like knowledge that we get from Islam. There is no Muslim has a doubt there is no salah. So if you reject something from the Islam, you reject the whole thing. You can't believe in the Prophet and then you don't believe in Jesus. You can't like pick and choose. It's a whole package. Whether you believe in it or not. So if you reject Salah, Siyam, Hajj, you said it's not part of Islam, you are not a Muslim. There is no doubt about this. But what if you say like Hajj is very difficult? Siyam is very difficult. It's a very great sin. But all the scholars agree. If you say Siyam is very difficult, I will not do it. Hajj is very difficult, I will not do it. And zakah, it's just like someone take from my money, I will not do it. If you do this, and you say I will not do it, then you are still Muslim, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala maybe will punish you for that, and maybe not. It depends on Allah. So because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said He would forgive everything except shirk, associating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now, all the scholars they agree if you reject one of the pillars, you are not a Muslim. If you leave, they call the takasul, or you just like feel it's difficult to do, siyam, hajj, zakah, you are still Muslim, but very, in a very dangerous situation. What about salah? If you say salah is very difficult, they can't do it. Now there is a big de debate between the scholars. Some of them, they said, you're still Muslim. Some of them, they said, no, you are not Muslim anymore. They said, there is no an action. If you leave it in Islam, it will take you from Islam to Kuf, except Salah. Why? Because the Prophet Sallallahu said, Al-Ahd al-Ladhi baynana wa baynahum salah the agreement between us as a Muslims is Salah. Whoever leaves Salah, he committed Kufr. He's committing Kufr. And he said in Sahih Muslim, Between the man and Kufr is leaving Salah. So it's a very strong hadith. It's all taking one direction. And it's even the opinion of Ibn Umar when he said like, we didn't actually see, or Ibn Mas'ud, he, did he didn't see, we didn't see any action can take you out of Islam except leaving the Salah. But still, the majority of the scholars, they said, if you leave the Salah, because it, you think it's hard, or the Kasulan, because you are lazy, that's what they said. You're still Muslim, but you will be punished on it, and it's a very bad thing to do. And they depend actually on one ayah and one hadith. The ayah that I mentioned, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, He will forgive everything except associating with Him, so the salah is one thing of these. And the other hadith that is narrated by Imam Malik, uh, Ahmed, Abu Dawood, and Nasa'i. The Prophet ﷺ said in this hadith, 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it five times prayer obligatory upon each Muslim. Whoever keep them, whoever keeps them, it will be he will actually he will have he will have an uh, agreement with Allah that he will not punish him. He will not let him enter uh, hellfire. And if he wastes them, he has no ahd with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no agreement with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's up to Allah, this is the word of Ita, as zakah, giving the obligatory charity, which is zakah. So, zakat is something that each Muslim has to do. You have to pay zakat. How much is the zakat? Check. 2.5. Yeah. And what is the conditions for zakat? There's two conditions. How? Yeah. What nisab? So, what is nisab? So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set some amount to the poor people in the money of the rich. <coughs> and this just like to make a, like, a balance between them. So, there is a right go from you, if you are rich, to the poor people. But how, how we can know like you are rich or not? Two conditions. You should have a certain amount. Now it's like, let's say about $5,000 maybe. Like, at, like they, there is a minimum. And you should keep this amount for one whole year. And it's Qamariya. It's not like, it's the Arabic year. You don't touch them. Like you have an extra money. You don't use this money. Now you are rich. You spend. Like you have all your needs covered. And then you have extra. And it's not like less. It's like big amount. And then you don't use them for all the year then you are rich. If you are rich, you will give 2.5 of whatever you, you have to the poor people. And this is, there is a lot of benefits of Zakat. A lot of benefits. It's for the economy, for the one who spend, and for the poor people. Because we, we actually, with, with the short look, we just think it's good for the poor people. But actually, if you look to it, it's very good to the economy as well. I, I, I know you will really like this. The zakah, imagine if like there's a few people, they, they, they have the money, and they kept the money in the, in the bank account. Who's going to work? There is no money. It will be like a very hard situation to the economy. But if you think, okay, at the end of the year, my money will be less by 2.5%. And what about the other year? And the, the year will follow. Oh, the money will get less. So I have to put this money, I have to invest, invest this money. So you take your money, you will go to the market. If you don't know what to do with the money, you will give it to some people. They will work. All the economy will go high. But now what, what happens, a lot of people, they, they keep the money in, in their bank accounts. So there is no much money to deal with, and that make a lot of like fail in the, in the market as well. So, check. Uh, uh, isn't it the so on the wealth you have for a year, the wealth? Yes. Well, not just the amount, or if you have a invested car, property. Yes. Is the value of that you have to count out as well as? Okay. For the okay. this is a very good question, by the way. But I will keep the questions after the, we finish the hadith. Whatever you need and use, it will not consider as a money for zakah. Like for example, you have two cars. 
one that you use, and the others like your wife's car. And you need them. So you don't consider this as a money, like the zakah will not be applicable for this money. But if you said like, I have a lot of money in my bank account, so let's buy some gold. Or let's buy, this is a good opportunity, let's buy this car, and this car will sell like twice the price. And then you bought this car. The hawl count, so you have to collect your money. So do you count this this car as a zakat? Yes, because it's for trade. It's not for use. Whatever you use, you will not consider as a money applicable for zakat. And whatever you don't use, you just like try to make money or save your money or try to make a trade, then we use. Same thing, like there is an opinion about the, the, the gold for the lady. They said, if the, the woman use the gold, it will not consider us as a capital. But if it's just saving, to save your money, then you have to pay the capital. And had to bait. What is Hajj? Going to Mecca, doing certain actions, I can't go through them all, it will take like forever. And perform Hajj. What is the condition for Hajj? It's mentioned in the Quran. No deaths. Almost. It's one of them, but it's, it's, there is a condition that covers all. Many istata'a ilayhi sabila. Many istata'a ilayhi sabila. So whoever can make it, he can make, he can offer it. Like for example, you have the money and you have the health, but they didn't approve your visa. What to do? You can't go there. You have the health, you don't have the money. You have the money, you don't have the health. So it's like whenever you, you can make it. You have to. And it's one of the pillars of Islam. If you don't do it, there is something missing in, 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 in the pillars of Islam, in your Islam. And Psalm Ramadan. And it's only, only Ramadan, it's obligatory that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it something you have to do. But actually, the, the scholars, they said, there's three types of siyam that people, they have to do it. They have to. One of them, siyam Ramadan. What is the other two? You have to. Ashura? Sitta Chawar? So, so, so three kinds of siyam? Kafara. Yes, that's one. Kafara. What about Nidr? If you said by Allah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for me, Al-Halif is Kafara. Qazara is Kafara. Because you don't do, so then you do Kafara. Kafara is the penalty of doing something like you don't keep your promise or you do something wrong. If if you can't there's another thing for So usually the song is at the end. But again, so three so, so a lot of things going on. So, Siyam, Ramadan. And whatever else of Siyam or fasting is Tatawah, is Nafiyah. And actually, we have the hadith when the 
the guy came to the Prophet وسلم, the Bedouin guy, and he asked, he said, like, what the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon me? Uh, he said, like, to offer five times a prayer. And he said, nothing extra. He said, like, إلا أن except if you want to offer extra. He said, what about, like, zakat? He explained the zakat. He said, that's it. He said, that's it, except if you want to spend more. And he asked about siyam. He said, Saul Ramadan. He said, that's it. He said, that's it. Except if you want to give or offer an extra siyam. So we know this is the obligatory. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, Aflaha in Sada. After he left, he said, he will achieve, succeed if he said the truth. If he will keep this, he will achieve, succeed. That's what the Prophet Sallallahu said. Actually, there is another narration in Sahih Muslim. He said, "Aflaha wa abihi in sadaq." Anyone knows what abihi means? Wa abihi. It seems as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam make a promise, like make, like swear with something less than Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He said, "Aflaha wa abihi in sadaq." So, what we know about like al-half bi ghairi Allah. To swear with something besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is it Allah? Shirk. Shirk. Okay. So it's not Allah. And if you make health with something besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's me you associate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why the Prophet does such as like like this, this thing? He said, Aflaha wa abihi any ideas? Actually, the scholars, they talk about this a lot. Some of them, they said, oh, this hadith is like this and this. And actually, this hadith is the most authentic hadith is narrated by Muslim. It's very authentic hadith. There is no doubt about it. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Aflaha wa abihi in salat. He said, with his father or by his father, he will achieve, succeed if he said the truth. And if we want to make something like this, we say like, by Allah. We will not say by his father. The best thing that what Imam Nawawi said about this hadith. He said, sometimes we say some words to make the sentence like stronger, but it never comes to our mind to promise or to swear. A lot of, a lot of things like, we, we know like, they said like, da'atik. What does it mean? No, no, could you explain da'a for me? What is da'a? It means nothing. <laughs> for what? Yourself. <laughs> Actually, it, it makes no sense. Like, I, I was thinking about it, like, why people, they said da'a, because it doesn't mean anything. But it's a, it's, it's a language that, like, the Arab, they used to make, like, wa'abi, wa'abi, wa'abak, wa like, whatever. In Egypt, you probably say, wa'abi. This is like a little bit so far. <laughs> you should avoid this, but sometimes if you don't have the intention to swear with anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are not making shirk. You have to be careful. Let your time used to swear with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask people in your community to stop doing this. But Someone do it, don't go like right away and say like, oh you are a kafir now. You associate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes it's like the words that the whole community they used to do, it never comes to their mind they swear with with these names. So it's very good to change these habits, but like it's not associating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unless you swear with the intention that you think this one is like very high reputation, so you make you know, associate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you swear with his name. Like, well, for example, some people they said, oh, uh, with the soul of my father, or by the soul of my father. They think this is very high to swear with. There is no doubt this is like association. So we have to be careful. And this is a good benefit from this hadith.
So again, I know I, I talked a lot today. This hadith is a one of the greatest hadith that we depend on to say the arkan of Islam, the pillars of Islam. So we have five pillars depending on this hadith. But the last thing to end this hadith with, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned only five. What about the rest of things like we have jihad, isabilillah, we have very like good things that we have to do sometimes. So is only this arkan or not? Some of the scholars, they said it's only this arkan, whatever extra is extra. And some of them they said, oh, the Prophet Sallallahu doesn't mention this because of this. Like for example, the jihad will stop when the Jesus will come. But actually, in one narration to this hadith, even in Sahih Muslim, that one guy asked Ibn Umar, Abdullah Ibn Umar, he said, Ala tabzu? Don't go for jihad. He said, I hear the Prophet Sallallahu and he said this hadith. So, that gives you the meaning that Ibn Umar said, this is only the arkan of Islam. Whatever extra is extra, even jihad fi sabirina. But we have two kinds of jihad. Jihad for the sake of da'wah, and that's, and this is like a very good point, I, I, I should like point this. Like at that time, people, they stopped Muslims from talking about Islam or delivering they said that's why they, they used to fight and they actually they didn't fight with any city if they accept them because they used to offer them before they they fight if they said no you will not enter our village or our city they will fight them so we have two kinds of jihad one of them it's a defense jihad some enemy attack you and this is something necessary, you have to. And this is like in, in each religion, in each, like, even, like, law. If, yes, exactly, if someone attack your city, you have to stand for your city and, and, and defend yourself, your family, your, your brothers. And then there's a jihad for da'wah. If they accept you to deliver the da'wah, there is no need to do jihad. But if they stop you from delivering the da'wah, you have to go. And now, these days, especially like the best jihad and the best da'wah with, with akhlaq, with, with the, like, you, because jihad, as the Prophet said, sometimes it's jihad, jihad, jihad al-nafs, is to fight the desires that you have and to make yourself straight and let the other people know the Islam your actions and this is the, this is very difficult jihad it's not easy the Prophet he even called the Hajj as a jihad he like one time a guy he came to the Prophet وسلم, and he asked him like to take the permission to go to, to jihad and he said do you have like one of your parents alive he said yes he said he said, go to them and make jihad by obeying them and like helping them. So everything can be jihad when it's hard. Because jihad is from juhd. From like when you make like like very big effort. That's how, how the word has been taken from the Arabic. So we talked about this hadith. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, gives us succeed to explain a little bit of the meaning of the hadith and if you have any questions now anything no does that go back to the